70%. 70% of businesses are closing down within 10 years. More than half of them within the first year. This is a crazy number. Just think about all the people that you know that started a business and failed. Might be your parents, your spouse, your partners. All the shattered dreams, the life savings, the days and nights they put into it, the love, the passion, all gone now. And as crazy as this number is, what really got my attention was the fact that this number hasn't changed much for the past 20 years. So much has changed around us, yet this number stayed the same. One thing is for sure. It's much easier and cheaper to run a business nowadays than ever before in history. I remember where only 10 years ago, when we moved to a new office, we invested $15,000 in putting together a computer network just so we can share files, something that we all do now for free using Dropbox. And same goes for marketing using social media, manufacturing, and even global distribution. Everything is so much easier. So how come in this abundance of resources, we couldn't change the statistics of failing businesses? This question is what started my journey 15 years ago. If it's not about the cost or the lack of resources, what is it all about? So let me take you back to what is probably one of your earliest childhood memories regarding business. I'm sure you all played the game of Monopoly, right? Well, how do you win Monopoly? The only way to win every game of Monopoly is by making sure you bankrupt all the other players. <laughs> wow. What a powerful life lesson, huh? I'm really glad my kids got to learn it. Yeah. And you might think it's only a game, but we copy-paste this mindset into business. Because business is a game. Question is, what kind of a game? Actually, any system that you've ever been a part of is a game. Money, education, corporates, marriage. And by that, I don't mean that it should be taken lightly. I mean that there is a specific game mechanism designed into it. And that mechanism is a fear-based one. Fear of losing money, losing your business, losing your spouse, you name it. So you might ask yourself, what's, what's wrong with that? Well, the more we fear, the less creative and daring we are, and we are compromising our self-expression which is exactly the opposite of what we should be doing in order to succeed. From the board game of Monopoly to the Ivy League universities, we've been taught that business is a competition. It's a war to be fought over limited resources. Dog eat dog. And we have to fight each other all the way to the finish line. But this is not the true story of economy. Because you might think that every time someone pays you money for your products or your services, then now you have more money and they have less. Your prosperity comes on their expense. But that's not the true story. Because whenever you sell something, you bring value into the market. And the entire pie expense, everyone has more. Over the past 55 years, the global population doubled to over 7 billion people. So what? Do we all have to share the same resources, but now with more people? According to the World Bank, the global GDP grew from around $11 trillion in 1960 to almost $80 trillion nowadays. 
eight times more money and products into the market. Eight times more. You got to remember that. There is always money coming into the game. So once I realized that we are playing the wrong game of business, I knew that I have to do something about it. It took me about six years to design, test, and redesign until I crafted a new game of business. And it's called FreshBiz. But before I go deeper into that, I want to take you on a little visit back to the classroom. Remember when you were at school and the teacher used to write on the chalkboard with a little piece of chalk? And remember what happened when she accidentally missed and scrapped the, the board? Did you just like feel it? Who just like felt like this goosebumps? This is really interesting because your brain just generated a physical reaction in your body when there is actually no board, no chalk, no teacher, no nail. It was only a mental picture. And this is exactly the power of games. Because our brain cannot distinguish between what's real or not. Simply a mental picture triggers the neurons in your brain to fire off a specific sequence to do a specific task. So, for example, when you play a game and your goal is to make as much money by destroying all the other players, this is exactly what your brain is now wiring as a skill. And the more you play, the more you reinforce, the harder is the rewiring of your brain. But same goes if in the game you have to form a collaboration or make a creative move, your brain will start rewiring itself to those specific skills. So how do you design a game that will make us smarter and will give us the right skills for what is needed in today's economy? So when I was designing FreshBiz, I decided to focus on three major elements. Collaboration, creativity, and proactivity. The first thing that I wanted to do is to get rid of the last man standing zero-sum game of Monopoly. So the game of Fresh Bees is what we call a collaborative quest. You have to get to the island and you have 90 minutes to do so. Basically, you have to bring the best version of yourself to overcome the challenges in the game so you can win the game before the time is up. By definition, more than one can win the game because you have 90 minutes. And the more collaborative you are, the better chances you will have in winning the game. Now, same goes for life. Life is the ultimate time-based game. You want to get to whatever you decide is your island before the time is up. And the more you'll be collaborative with other people, better chances you will have in winning that game. This is exactly what we did in FreshBiz and how we took our small boutique company and turned it into a global company serving tens of thousands of people in over 20 countries with no offices and no employees. We simply saw other training companies as our potential collaborators instead of competitors. We gave them our game as a training tool and we created a collaborative quest with a goal of uplifting the global mindset. So once we took care of collaboration, now we can handle creativity. What is creativity? Creativity is the ability to put together different resources in a new way that never been done before and create something new that has value. So in the game of FreshBees, you have over 10 different dimensions you can play, from starting businesses to stock market to taking loans, using action cards, and many more. By putting them together in new ways, by making the game multidimensional, basically you can generate endless forms of combinations to generate creative ideas. 
And the more creative you are, more resources will be introduced into the game. And just as economy, the pie is always expanding. Actually, you cannot win the game without expanding the pie. Same as economy. And on top of all of that, you are always in the game. So in the game of Fresh Beats, you don't have to wait your turn to make a move. You see an opportunity, you act on it, you use your action card, you form a collaboration. You don't have to be the one holding the dice to move in the game. Because for so many years, we've been told to wait our turn. First go to school, then go to college, then find a job, then bring your value to the market. But that doesn't work anymore. So what does it mean that you don't have to wait your turn? It means that you don't have to graduate before you start Facebook. You simply start Facebook. And maybe graduate, maybe not. As my partner Simcha says, look for opportunities, not approval. In the next 30 years, urban population is going to grow from 3.9 billion to 6.4 billion people. Those are 2.5 billion new customers for local businesses. This is an exceptional opportunity to come up with new businesses because those cities and those citizens will need new and smart solutions of transportation, education, culture, food, fun, fashion, so much more. Those are really exceptional days for millions of people to be able to start smart, sustainable, and very profitable businesses. But we will have to change the game. We will have to upgrade the mindset to one which is more collaborative, more creative, more proactive. Just imagine kids at school and MBA students learning those skills while having fun. And think about business executives playing together a game of collaborative quest with the so-called competitors to bring those smart ideas into the market. For me, that was my journey for the past 15 years. From the realization, to designing the game, to selling our house, to invest in the company, which I have my lovely wife to thank for, Anat is here in the audience, to traveling the globe for the past seven years with my awesome partner Simcha, who's also somewhere in the audience, training thousands and thousands of people from big companies to students to entrepreneurs. And I can tell you one thing. The old game of business is broken. It's not going to work for you anymore. We got to change it. Now, you might think that changing the global mindset is hard work. Well, it is sometimes. But I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, for you personally, Simply start by changing the game you play. And this, in return, will change the way you play life. Thank you very much.